program that did certain things, like little strategies, so that it would make it as interactive as possible for both the, um, well, for the diverse audiences. And when I mean diversity, I mean uh, diverse culturally, sexually, and age. Um, so uh, when it came to, the, when, it, when it comes to age, because I'm sure we're going to discuss some, everything else with diversity, is that um, I found it really odd that, because I've got, um, I have a, a, um, a, three, a three-year-old daughter, and I've also got a 14-year-old uh, stepdaughter, is that there was this really weird um, chasm between uh, theater for young people where I would go into the audience and I would see that there would be, like as you were saying, they were gifted these, these performances where you're in there and, and it seems that even um, uh, the most horrible matinees where it's um, this school group doing this show, um, it was a horrible adaptation of Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> It wasn't the musical, let me tell you that. Um, we, we went there, um, and it was crowded. And it seemed like there were dozens of kids, all of these parents wanting to give their kids the experience of theater, which was fantastic if it wasn't a horrible show. And we, um, uh, you know, to see that, and that was good. Like, all the kids seemed to be very involved. And you're thinking, yeah, this is the future. This is the future. These kids are going to see theater when they grow up. When they grow up, they're going to have a subscription in it at Tarragon. And uh, <laughs> then... You know, you'd go to, I'd go and work at Factory doing the education program there, and, um, and, and Patty can probably um, say, you know, because Patty from here, from uh, Can Stage, is that you have these groups that will come in, and you'll see, uh, maybe more so for, with Factory because of um, the fact that we deal a lot with um, lower income schools. They would come in, and a lot of them were like, yo, where, when's, the, when's the movie starting? And you'd be like, oh my god, he thinks it's a movie. He <laughs> thinks there's a movie that's going to be in there, but there's going to be people on stage. And I would always have this you know, heart-to-heart -heart talk with them. And they're like, there's actually going to be live people on the stage. Um, and they can hear what you're saying. Uh, there's actually, you know, sometimes there'll be a nudity scene or whatever. Some, um, there's, there's a woman in, uh, who's going to be on stage, and she's going to be taking off her clothes. And I just want you to think just for a moment how that's going to feel like being on stage with a bunch of people looking at you without your clothes on. Um, so just have some respect. And I have all of them go, okay. And then they go in and they watch the show and they'd be wow. They'd be like, oh my god, that was on stage and were in front of me. And 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 it was it was funny to to see that difference. Like you know, you think that you're watching all these children and I'm not sure what's happening between that age, like you know, toddlers and and mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, like you know, school age children. All there's something that happens between that and the teenage children, uh, teenage kids that they're not quite getting the theater experience that they need to get. Uh, I'm not sure what it is. I'm not. I, 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 I guess because I, I mean I never worked at at, at Licktip to, um, to to work with teenage audiences, really like young teenage audiences. But there's something happening between those two ages where they're missing out on something, because uh, um, yeah, a lot of them thought that they was a movie theater. And everybody knows when we say Licktip, we mean that with Lorraine the Kim's. That's Lorraine Kim's a theater yeah. for young people. That's uh, I was at uh, Rec at Jarvis Collegiate. I went to go see. Um, the Rose Dean's show there, and people were really, really sort of digging the work. And afterwards, I think you got up and you talked about Danny, uh, the Danny uh, show. And I, uh, somebody two seats uh, by me was a student, and you were talking about, you know, the themes and dealing with poverty. Uh, and he turned to his friend and said, "Oh, I want to see that one." So that was a that was a really interesting moment for me, just being a listener in the in the audience. So clearly, the themes and the ideas that are being expressed in the work is touching is touching the audience, or at least the young people that were at that one Jarvis show. I adjudicated Sears just about three weeks ago. I don't know if I'll ever do it again. I don't. But, um, <laughs> but no, not because it was no, not because it was a an awful experience. It's just that I just am probably not a good adjudicator. Uh, but anyhow, I uh, I went to uh, see the, the work, and I went into some of those schools, and they were screaming like, "Woo!" You know, like <laughs> yeah. You know, like an actor came on, a student actor came on stage, and they were yelling for them. And I thought, holy. This is amazing, you know, like they're, they're the star system within the Sears Festival <laughs> structure. But um, so they're clearly excited about seeing, and this is the key, seeing each other. 
on stage. Um, so, you know, I think there's something, there's something in that. Um, um, for us at the Theatre Centre, not consciously, but we, because I, I agree with you, I think the audience potential is limitless, but in a way, <laughs> we are um, about serving, <laughs> or not serving, but it's, that's a tricky word, um, but working with smaller audiences, like much smaller audiences, so that the uh, experience uh, is n not is not a, a not is not for um, massive amounts of uh, of audience like 800 seats or even 200 seats really. I mean we're talking the scale between you know anywhere between 25, 45, 50 in the last show and maybe up to 100, but maybe up to 100. And so that's our scale, and that's what feels comfortable for us. We can you know I mean. That and that's and that, that's been working for us. Um, the the flip side to that is that um, I guess is is we're not able to um, uh, you know for that reason our profile is a little smaller, and and that's okay because I think that that's that's part of our that's part of what we do. So a lot of our development work that uh, we do from the very beginning is, is seen by, you know, a handful of people. So the Four Horsemen, which was at the factory, was in development for uh, two years at the Theatre Centre and maybe saw, uh, I think the last showing saw about, you know, 100 people at it or 150 people at it. Um, but that's our function and that's our role and I think that that's it, it's an important part to play. Uh, in the ecology. Because then you go on to, that show may go on to be picked up by Mervish. Yeah. Good segue. <laughs> Not exactly, but you know. <laughs> but no, I mean some shows that do start small, like yeah. that, like The Kink, right? Yeah. Does go on and s make that, do that transubstantiation yeah. somehow. Totally. I think The Four Horsemen is a, is a really commercial show, actually. I think it is. Um, but that's not our role and our function, so nope. that's why it's really important that there are, you know, transfer houses and commercial houses that can pick up work like that. It's really important, you know. Um, so, yeah. It's all coming down to you, John. <laughs> you need to speak about something. Okay. Uh, what would you like me to talk about? That? I would like you to talk. Actually, uh, I would. The missing I, person in the front row. Well, I, yeah, I think he goes to your shows. <laughs> He doesn't come to ours. And do, are you offended by the fact that people keep referring to you as commercial theater, or is that okay? No, you are. No. That's what you are, right? I, I like the term lick. 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 <laughs> you can have, sorry, Alan. Sorry, Alan. Anything that involves licking is sorry. good, in my opinion. <laughs> um, uh, no, the commercial theater, I, I'm not offended by the term commercial. I don't think anybody is, really. It's, it's a simply a term that really means a, uh, I, the, the audience decides what shows they want to go to and what shows they don't want to go to. Ultimately, they dis, they make that decision all the time anyway. Right, uh, except someone at Mervish decides first that they think that they can find yes, the audience Yes, that's for. right. And sometimes people are right and sometimes people are wrong. Right. And, and you never know until the show is up and running. Right. And, and people seem to think, uh, since we're talking about audience, that all, all one needs to do is have a lot of money to spend on marketing and miraculously an audience will appear. Mm -hmm. That isn't the case. If, if that were the case, no Hollywood film would ever fail. Everyone would be a huge su financial success. As it is, I think 99% never make back their investment. Only 1% make back their investment. And I think those odds are, those uh, statistics are not different for any other of the so-called arts you know, or entertainment or whatever you want to call them that operate on a commercial basis, i.e. without any government subsidy, that operate for the, you know, on a purely business level where they have to <coughs> make back their investment. In the publishing world, it's the same thing. Only a very small percentage of all the books published every year actually find a huge audience, a huge readership. It's the same in the music world. It's the same in, in every sort of world. So, and... I, I, I like to think the audience is always right, um, 
and and sometimes I don't agree with the audience's opinions, but they the audience as a whole, and it's funny how a group actually does have an opinion as a whole, uh, is is always right. So the job of a producer, and you know, is to is to try to marry a, per, a particular work to a particular audience, and and that's not an easy job to do, and and it's. And no one knows in advance. You, you don't know until you actually have an audience in the room what the response will be to a, to a particular work. But you can't program for an audience, though. You cannot program for an audience, yeah, okay. no. You know, you, no, you can't. <laughs> you, can't, you cannot program for an audience, no. But you can try to find an audience yeah. that may have some interest in seeing this story or these characters or these themes. And that's, I mean, it's something we all do, whether we're consciously of it, conscious of it or not, I mean, so, you know, when you're doing the kink in my hair, you go to the Caribbean community because the story is about their community. So it's a, it's a natural place to begin. Uh, but when you guys were, I don't think it was you, but it was the, it was a, a commercial production that Italian, Mambo Italiano. We did that. Okay. Like, I, that wouldn't be my thing in a way, but I guess a lot of Italians would have, would have, would have gone. It was, huge. It was, huge. Gone. It was that, that was an example of a show. <laughs> A show that got terrible notices from the critics, because mm -hmm. that's the other complaint people always have, all the critics kill everything. That is partly true, but it isn't true a lot of the time either. The critics can help in, in nurture, nurture an audience to find, you know, push them along that route to find this, this particular show. They can also stop somebody from going to this particular show. But ultimately, the audience does decide. It isn't the critics, it isn't the producers, it isn't the actors, it isn't the playwrights. It isn't the, it's, it's, ultimately, it's the audience that decides. And Mambo Italiano is a good example of that. It got terrible reviews. When I say terrible reviews, I mean they were. Uh, if, if they could use the word shit in print, they would have. No. They did not, but because they could not. As it was, it made, I think it made $3 million profit in a six-week run. Unheard of. Uh, it just it, it found its it's found it, its audience. How did it find its audience? It, it, partly it was is is and we go back to that cliche word of mouth. It found its audience through word of mouth. I think it was people telling other people. I don't know if you saw the show. You did, but it, it, for many people it worked. It people I know in Woodbridge saw it. It, it communicated yeah. something to them. Uh, you know, and I yeah. and I have a theory about that show. I think the, I think. That show was a show about the children of, of immigrants. And we don't have enough stories in our society, North America, about... The, the, when, you, when you think of sitcoms on television, there aren't sitcoms about the children of immigrants. Uh, there, you know, and it communicated something that isn't told very often. There's that, there's that one right now, on, I think, in CBC, or they probably have canceled it, but it's an Italian one as well. I can't remember the name there's of it. There's one, Little remember? Mosque on the Prairie. Yeah, right, and then there was another one. It was uh, I can't remember who. Anyway, it was written by but, the same guy. It was written by the. Yeah. Was it, he was writing Italian. Yeah. The Mambo yeah. Italiano guy yeah. wrote, wrote that Italian. Yeah. I don't know how successful it I can't was. Remember. But is it Rentagoli? Rentagoli. No, no, no goalies no. were involved. No goalies. <laughs> <laughs> My big. S sorry. What was it? Steve yes, that's him. Yeah. Yeah. Steve. It was one season, and it was based on the characters of yeah. Mambo Italiano. Yeah. But I, and uh, I don't know. The funny thing it. about Mambo Italiano is essentially it was a television sitcom on stage. Mm -hmm. But I think it worked better on stage than it worked on television. And it was also made into a film that had a gala screening at the film festival. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't, the film was was I saw the film as well, and it, I didn't think it was as successful as the play. And I think what made the play successful was sitting in a room with people just like the characters on stage and, and, and sharing in their recognition of themselves on stage. That's what made it special. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's what you can't get from television, that's what you can't get from the film, uh, which are very isolating, alienating experiences. But sitting in a room and sharing in that laughter when you recognize a stereotype, and, and that play did deal in stereotypes. Uh, and just recognizing that they, they recognize these characters, these you know, these stereotypes of the, the Italian mother and the Italian father and the uh, and the sister and all and all that kind of stuff. And I feel like I'm from that family. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't go see it. You didn't go see you it. Know, but you go to the theater. 
theater center. And if you had seen it, you may have rolled your eyes and said... <laughs> well, no, I don't know. I, who knows? Yeah, who knows? But, yeah, no, but it wasn't a very sophisticated piece of theater. It yeah. 